Bridge City Church. So awesome that you're here with us today. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Here we are with part three of Go Into Your World. That's right, we're going into our world. Hey, way back when, when I first met Jesus, this is what happened to me. I was 15 years old. I was uh, going into the uh, 11th grade. It was right in between my sophomore and junior year in high school. And I met Jesus in a real way. I mean, a personal way. He rocked my world, rocked my life. And so what I did was I went back to high school and I became a football manager for the football team, which was really a glorified water boy. And so I went back purposely because I wanted to be intentional about sharing my faith with everybody on the football team. That's right, I was gonna accept responsibility of what Jesus asked me to do. And trust me, to do this, I was gonna to have to depend on the Holy Spirit because it was not an easy task. I was made fun of, I was put down, I was belittled, but I knew this that Jesus asked me to do something. And that's what I, I see, I met him and I was in love with him and, and he asked me to go do this and so I was gonna go do it. It wasn't an obligation, it was a great joy. Hey, that's what today's all about. We're gonna be going to John chapter four and um, I'm not gonna read all basically 40 verses, 42 verses that we're gonna cover, but I'm gonna be uh, covering it, like the, the whole story. But I want you to go back and read John chapter four because it is packed with so many good things. Here's our big idea of the day. Our big idea for the day is this. We will go into our world. That's right, we will go in, not can, not a possibility. We will go into our world confidently when we practice these three things. First of all, the first one is, is be intentional. Second, accept responsibility. And the third is depend on the Holy Spirit. Now that's right, we will go confidently into our world when we become bad. See what I did there? See what I did? Come on, come on. Be intentional, accept responsibility, depend on the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're gonna be covering today. See, there's a tension that we have in our world between trying to reach the whole world and then just, uh, listen, I'm just, I'm just trying to reach one person in my life. I can't change my whole world, but I can affect the one. That's what this is all about, how Jesus affected the one. So here we go in John chapter Four, verse four, he had to go through Samaria and eventually he came to a Samaritan village. Now, interesting thing here, he was weary. He was, he was tired from a long walk and it was about noontime. And so first of all here, we see that Jesus was going intentionally somewhere. He was going, it wasn't like, oh, I have to go through Samaria. No, he intentionally purposefully, it, like really if you translate this, I must go. There was a must go to Samaria for Jesus here. So significant here. Um, eventually, as you go, you're gonna meet somebody. Now, now, wait a minute, before I even go on here, it's interesting that Jesus is listed as tired. He's listed as weary. I don't see Jesus like that. But let me just tell you this, if, if we are waiting for the perfect time to tell other people about Jesus, demonstrate his love, it'll never happen. Because there's always a time we're tired, there's always a time we're weary, there's always a reason that we shouldn't or couldn't, but Jesus pushed past that. You see, Jesus, it wasn't an obligation, it wasn't this duty to fulfill, he saw a person, and that's what we're gonna be looking at, the person here, and, and, and it's noontime. It's very significant here. See, we're never going to accomplish anything unless we do it intentionally. That's what we see. Jesus had intentionality upon his life. He purposely went to Samaria. That's so important here. Now, verse seven, as we go, as we go along here, soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. Please give me a drink here. He was alone at the time because his disciples went out to get some food. That's right, they were making a Taco Bell run. They were making a, a Chipotle run. They were, they were going to Moe's. Or could it be they were going to Chick-fil-A and having some Jesus chicken? And that's why there was such a long line. That's what took so long for them to come back here. So they were off going there. But here we see Jesus spoke to a woman. So many things here. 
I mean, it, he was in Samaria. Samaritans were like dogs. They were half-breeds. Jews and Samaritans, I mean, they would do business together, but they would never share a drinking vessel together. He's talking to a woman. She was there at noontime, which means she was ostracized from, her, from the town she lived in here. Jesus broke the race, religious, gender barrier, and the reputation barrier of this woman. And he did it with intentionality because he accepted the responsibility for the person in front of him. That's right, Jesus saw the person. But unfortunately, we let pride, they deserve this. We let fear, I can't do this, get in the way of what we really should be doing. Jesus pushed past all of those things, pushed past the barriers and some of the labels here. And, and we're going to get into the label here, that reputation. If she was there at noontime, it's because nobody else was there. And she had her water vessel to, get, to, get, to go to the well. That's why she's known as the woman at the well. That's what this story is referred to as. And so she, she had that. And she's going here. And, 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 there's, and there's something significant about Jesus is pushing past all these barriers you and I, this is what we need to do. If we're going to go into our world, we have to push back past the pride and the fear barrier and push in here. And then Jesus, and, and so he, he says, hey, hey, give me a, give, give me a drink here. And, she, and she's like, how are you going to get a drink? And, and, and Jesus basically says this. He said, anyone who drinks this water will become thirsty again. But those who drink the water that I give Come on, they'll never be thirsty. It's fresh. It's bubbling up. It's eternal life. Jesus says, I have something so much more for you. And what he's saying is, I have a gift for you, which refers to the Holy Spirit. So Jesus, I believe, depended on the Holy Spirit to lead him to the right place at the right time to see this woman who other people would have, would have ostracized and pushed aside. But he saw her and he saw the reality of who she was. Why? Because we are going to depend on the Holy Spirit. That's right. We will go confidently into our world. We're going to make a huge difference when we go intentionally. When, when we have to be intentional. We have to accept responsibility and depend on the Holy Spirit. These are the things that we're going to do. So Jesus begins to have a conversation with this woman. And actually, he calls her out. He says, hey, you, you've had several husbands, and the person you're living with isn't even your husband now. Isn't it interesting? Jesus actually calls out a sin in this woman. I know we live in a day and age that, that many people say we shouldn't bring up people's sin, and we shouldn't like confront people. But this is the deal. If, if people are going to receive the good news of Jesus Christ, if they are going to receive who he is, first they, we, we have to get lost before we get found. Listen, this is the deal here. And, and, and the woman goes on and they're having a conversation. And, and she says, hey, I know that the Messiah is coming. In verse 25, the one who is called Christ, and he's going to explain everything to us. And here it is. The big reveal, the big reveal right here in verse 26, Jesus said, I am the Messiah. What? Yeah, that's right. He said, I'm the Messiah. He, he reveals himself to her. Here, he, he, here, this woman who is ostracized, living with a man, had several husbands, and, 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 and she's hiding from the rest of the town, and, and, and she's, he's talking to a Samaritan, and he's talking to somebody that's not kind of with his circle here. And right about then, the disciples who were out making the food run, they come back. Okay, they come back and they're shocked to find him talking to a woman. But nobody had the nerve to ask. Nobody, nobody had the nerve to, to say anything to him. And, and like, what, what do you want with her? Why are you talking with her? Like, they're just kind of like, man, what's going on here? Jesus is doing this thing and, and he's talking to this woman and doesn't he know who this woman is? And, and they're going on and on here. And they didn't say, hey, do you want something to eat? And hey, we got Subway. They didn't say anything like that. They, just, they were just afraid to talk here. And so what happens next is so powerful. So powerful. Let me, let me just, this is where the story begins to get good here. Listen, she left her water jar beside the well. <clears throat> and she ran back to her town. Telling everyone, verse 29, Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be?
be the Messiah. Wow. She had an encounter with Jesus. And in this moment, something had to come alive in her, which had to be the work of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is who draws us to Jesus. It drew me as a a, a young boy, 15. And it's who drew you and who, who is drawing all of us, even right now, back to him. That's what he's doing. And so in verse 30, the people came streaming from the village to him. You see, Jesus was very intentional about going to Samaria because there was a woman at the well. This woman became very intentional because she was going to go back into her town. This is so significant here. See, Jesus was bad, be intentional, come on, accept responsibility, depend on the Holy Spirit, because this is how we confidently go into our world. But now she became bad too. That's right, she was going to get bad. She was going to do exactly what Jesus did for her. Now she was going to do for others. Amazing here. A simple invite. You know, in here at Bridge City Church, we have been taking invites very, very serious. We've been taking invites serious because the power of an invite. I'm so excited that somebody invited me. Not only to church, but they invited me to Jesus and they invited me to this church. And that's what we're doing for others. And I want you and, and all of our pastors and our leaders, we're making a big deal over this. And all of our small groups, we're praying for people weekly so we can use invites and invite as many people as possible so that they will come streaming in, streaming in to meet him in a real way here. Now, I want to let you know, she did this all without a seminar. She did this without being trained. She just went and did it. There was something inside of her, and I don't believe she could articulate at this point that what the Holy Spirit was doing in her, but I believe the Holy Spirit was at work in her because it was prompting her to do something that was outside of her norm. That's how we know it's the Holy Spirit. She was uneducated. She was unlearned. She was uh, far from God's people, far from God, but Jesus broke all those barriers here. That's what this is about here. She intentionally went and told her whole town here. She accepted that responsibility. That's what she did here. Now, the disciples, see, the disciples were only interested in food. That's right, they, the disciples wanted food. Jesus had food they knew not of. That's what he says here in, in the story here. See, we get consumed with lunch. We, we do. I do. You do. Maybe we all do. We get consumed with lunch. What's for lunch? What's Jesus serving for lunch? Fish and chips today. What's he doing? But no, we get consumed with these things. But Jesus said, he's communicating, I have nourishment you know not of. I, I have something inside of me. I want to do the will of the Father here. And he's saying, you're missing what's going on right in front of you. May I dare to say that we sometimes miss what God's doing. We miss because we're consumed on lunch. We're consumed on other things, but we're not consumed with with there. And so Jesus uses this metaphor. He tells this story. He uses this and says, man, I got food. I got nourishment. I have something that you know not of here. Now, Jesus goes on in verse 35. In verse 35, here it is. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. I, um, as I read this text, uh, over and over this week, before preparing to be with you in this way. These words, wake up and look around, have pierced my heart. They have pierced me to the core. That could it be, if I want to go into my world and make a difference, I need to wake up and look around. Maybe that's what God's asking us to do. Stop being consumed with lunch and get consumed with him. And he uses this, and it was a proverb of their day, 
And he said, the, the, the fields are white. The fields are ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages and the fruit they, they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits the planter and the harvest. And, and here he's saying like, look, look, there's a proverb that says four months from now, something's going to happen. But Jesus didn't want his disciples, you and me, to have that mentality. He wanted his disciples to have the mentality that, that we're not going to be ones who push off the work of God. We're not going to be the ones who just, who just ignore it and say it's going to happen someday. He wants us to have an urgency and be intentional and accept responsibility and depend on the Holy Spirit and do what he did. That's right. This is what he's saying to us right now. Don't have that mentality. If Jesus were speaking to us today, what would he say? I believe that it would, it would definitely have something about the urgency of the day that we live. It would have an urgency about those who are far from God. Are we going to wake up and look around and see them? That's what he's saying here. Will we see our circles of friends? Will he see our community? Will he see the committees that we're on? Will he see the, the street that we live? Will we wake up and look around these things that are right around us in our world? That's what I believe God's saying here. And what should we expect as a harvest worker? As a harvest worker, he explains here, there are eternal rewards for doing this. And it's eternal fruit and there's joy. Who doesn't want those three things? I want those three things. But unfortunately, we become very myopic. We become nearsighted. That means I only can see what's right in front of me rather than looking at what's around me. I'm guilty of this. We can tell that we are spiritually nearsighted by the way we pray and what we pray for. That's how we can tell. When we're, I'm only praying for the things, my concerns, when I'm only praying for the concerns of the immediate people around me in my life, the Christians or my family, and I'm not praying for those outside, I become nearsighted. I've become myopic. Could it be that Jesus' followers, the ones who walked with him, that just maybe they were nearsighted, they became myopic? Maybe God's telling all of us to wake up and, 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 and look around here and, 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 and look and, and let's be bad together. Let's be intentional. Let's accept responsibility. Let's depend on the Holy Spirit. And let's not allow, let's not allow pride or fear to rule us. Let's push past these barriers together here. Because Jesus, with this one woman, he forgave her, he restored her, he empowered her. She went into her world and began inviting everybody, come and see, come and see. And I don't know about you, but I'm the same way as you are. Whenever I encounter Jesus, I want everybody to meet him. I'm just more in tune to inviting people to come to church or talk to people about Jesus. But when I'm not encountering his transformation, I just... I just don't do it. Maybe we just got to go back and, and, and have a, an experience with him and be transformed by him. Listen, there has never been a time like now to invite people to church. We live in a day and age where marriages, families, finances, work, there's, there's an anxiety, there's a fear, there's a hopelessness that we feel. And it cycles frequently with every election. All these things creep into our world and creep into our lives, but there's never been a better opportunity than now. Now is the time. The fields are white unto harvest. It's harvest time. Let's work together. And that's what this woman did for Jesus here. People need hope here. That's what they need. That's what this world is longing for, is a hope. And that's what they need from you and they need from me. Will we not only be bad like Jesus, but will we be bad like this woman at the well? Will we leave this time together today and say that we will go into our world, not can, not maybe, but we will go into our world. And, and I'm going to be intentional and accept responsibility and depend on the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want to do. You see, that's what this woman did here. 
See, we're a church not made up for church people. We're a church that's made up for those people that are far from God and not here yet. Not experiencing God yet. That's what we want to be. And so that we all together can grow and, and we can learn to give of ourselves, but go into our world. And I want to read these last couple verses to you. I just want to pause for a second. I want to read these and allow them to, to just um, saturate our hearts together. In verse 39, many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because of what the woman said. He told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in the village. So he stayed for two more days. Wow. Long enough for many more people to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because we heard him for ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the Savior of the world. There's people in my world and in your world that are one conversation away. One invite away from believing and seeing Jesus in a very real and personal way. The question is, is will we go and be Jesus to them? Will we go and do that? She was transformed. A life transformed by Jesus will do what Jesus did and will go into their world. So what are we going to do with this? This is it. This is what we're doing here. Number one, we are going to be intentional. That's right. I have written in my phone and the notes in my phone the answers to these four questions. Where I live, the street I live, that's where God has placed me. Your work or your school, that's where God placed you. That's your mission field. Then also your community, your city, your circle of friends or your committees that you're a part of. I have written down all of these things. This is where God is sending me. I'm going to be intentional now. And then last but not least, a list of the people that we are praying for by name. All of our, all of our small groups, all of our connection groups, we are reading, we're reading this list of names and we're praying for people. That's right. We are not going to get nearsighted or myopic. We're going to keep looking around. We're going to wake up and we're going to look around our world. That's what we're going to do. That's what I'm inviting you to do with us, with me. We're going to be intentional and write these things down and pray for them on a regular basis. Will you join me in that? But we're not going to just stop right there. We're going to accept responsibility for those around us. We're not going to leave it up to our church or leave it up to those who have a gifting or calling or leave it up to those who do outreach. We're, no, we're going to accept responsibility for those areas that God has placed us. That's what we're going to do. We are God's plan. That's right. We are God's plan. You're God's plan. Will we? Accept the responsibility that this isn't somebody's job. This is ours. Will we accept responsibility? I may not be able to affect the whole entire world, but I can affect my world. You can affect your world. That's the joy of what we're communicating here. And last but not least, we're going to depend on the Holy Spirit. That's what we're going to do. So first of all, we're going to share our story. How simple is it to just share the, our story? Um, as you go into your world and you're meeting with people, listen, let's not point out everything that's wrong with the world. I know Jesus did communicate about, you know, the, the, the woman that was living with a man and had previous relationships with other men. Let's not lead with that. Let's lead with our story. This is what Jesus did for me. That's what the woman at the well did. She left and just said, this is what Jesus did for me. Come and see a man who told me everything. And, and, and her life was transformed. Share your story. What you were before Jesus. What happened after Jesus came in. And what you're like now. I was purposeless. At 15 years old, I had no purpose. I was lost. And Jesus came into my life. And I now had a purpose to live. And I'm still living for that purpose with great joy. 
That's my story. And I tell people what I'm experiencing now. That's what we do. And, and with depending on the Holy Spirit, I do that depending on God. He does the heavy lifting. I just open up my mouth. And last but not least, we invite people. That's right, this week. Go into your world. Invite as many people as you can to come with you, uh, to, to, to join you here because this is it. There are people here that are in your world that are one conversation away, one invite away from a radical transformation. That's what it means to go into our world. Are you ready to go into your world? I'm going into mine every day looking Waking up and looking around here. You see, because I realize hell is a real place and heaven is a real place. God doesn't send people to hell. Hell is a place that people decide to go to pay for their own sins. That's right. That's what it is. You're going to go and pay for your own sins. Heaven is a place where I'm heading and I want you to head there too because Jesus Christ paid for my sins. That's right, I had sin. That's right, I, I, a lot of sin. Jesus Christ paid for it by what he did on the cross. So I'm not gonna go to hell and pay for my own. I'm gonna receive the forgiveness that Jesus Christ did and he paid the price for my sins. That's what this is all about. This is the hope. And then, and that's why at the end of this text that I just read to you, we know that Jesus is the Savior that's right, he saved me from paying for my own sins. Wow, but he doesn't just want me to enjoy that benefit when I get to heaven. I can enjoy it now because he becomes the leader of my life. There was this great chasm in between me and God and, and, and it's the cross bridges that. And by faith, I receive his forgiveness and now I ask Jesus to be the leader of my life and I learn what it means to be like Jesus on a day in and day out basis. And then I learn how to give of myself, selflessly, sacrificially, just like Jesus did. I learned it's a joy to do that. And now we get to go into our world and do exactly what Jesus did for us, just like this woman at the well, and tell everybody about this. So let me ask you a question. Do you have this hope inside of you? I don't know what you're going through right now, but. Maybe there's a lot that's going on inside and fear and anxiety or maybe none of that. Maybe you're quite confident right where you are. I know this, that without a moment with Jesus, and we call that the moment you cross the bridge, that you said, I'm a sinner and I need Jesus Christ and I want him to be the leader of my life. I'm going to attend church now so I can learn to be like him. And then I'm going to learn how to be a part of what he's doing. This is what it means to cross the bridge and have a relationship with God. I don't want you to have a religion. I don't just want you to do religious things. I want to offer you a relationship with Jesus that's filled with joy and peace and everything else that goes with that. So I want to offer you that right now. Would you like to have that hope inside of you? That's right. If that's you right now, I just want you to acknowledge it. Maybe even right now where you are, maybe you just need to raise up your hand to God and just say, hey God, here I am. Here, raise up your hand right now and say, God, here I am. And, and then we're gonna pray this simple prayer together. And maybe we can all say this, wherever you are right now, just pray this prayer out loud. Just say, Father God. That's right, Father God. Say it out loud, Father God, forgive me. For I have sinned. I ask you, now to be my leader. I want you, Jesus, to be my forgiver and my leader. I want to go into my world and tell other people about you. In Jesus' name. What a great and awesome prayer. And we are so excited to take this step with you right now. Hey, thank you so much for being with us today. I am loving this series. Next week, we're gonna be wrapping up this series and looking at a, a couple more stories about Jesus and how people met him in a real way and how he went into his world and how we're gonna go into ours. Thanks for being here.